It's my feel good breakfast show. Sure we. This has been an interesting discussion. Welcome back. We've been chatting about BRICS all morning and the implications of being in business with Russia. That's right. And we are now about to take a look at the pros and cons about this agreement with Brazil, Russia, India and China. And here to break it all down for us, we have Natasha Lord back on the couch. Natasha, let's take it back to the beginnings. Mm. What was the initial purpose of forming BRICS? It's collaboration. We needed to come together, form an alternative voice, as I said, and have a, a space where we can collaborate on all fronts. So if it's politically, if it's economically, um, we wanted to create our own opportunities and not wait for the West to do that. And so we were economically, we are economically aligned and we were intentional about that. And in so doing that, we formed BRICS, which now we've seen it's worked out well enough that other countries want to join us. Um, and, a, and a lot of countries, which a is great, which countries. means this could be the next big step, which is yeah. great. That being said, we're going to have to move through certain gateways, mm -hmm. as we are with Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. Yeah. We are probably going to see China do something similar within the Taiwanese space as well. We're going to have to learn how to deal with this walking the line kind of element. Mm. How do we do this without completely obliterating our reputation? Is there a balance to be found? Or do we have to go one side or the other? You know... Out of our freedom, we have always been kind of neutral, we've always been calm, we've never had to actually take a really intense hard stance, stance, a hard yeah. stance on anything. So we've always been seen as that, you know, neutral Gandhi-like figure in the economic, in economic and political world. Um, we then need to decide what matters to us. And I think that's an ongoing or developing answer to that question. Do we align with that? Do we, is that something that we as people feel is right? Is this something that we get our opinion from, from the media? Or have we sat and thought about who we are politically, who we are as people, who we want to be as represented? Because if we really sit about it, think about it as citizens, are we saying, I don't agree with Russia because we've seen something on TV or have we taken the time to interrogate the details? I'm not saying for or against, yeah. but I feel that a lot of it is just really a regurgitation of what is been happening or what has been said and subconsciously we're just taking it in and we've got a natural trust to and it's a bias to that. it's a, a bias there, right? it's a confirmation of that bias yeah and, and and it's interesting because the alternative voice has not been raised in the same volume at the same volume so we've heard a lot of the side coming from the west but we haven't actually heard the other side of how we're actually economically aligned. And so if we see that inflow of information and we contrast it with the lack thereof from where we're actually economically aligned, do we have an opinion or do we just have, are we just the targets of a lot of the same we're information? We're just in the wrong place at the right or wrong time. Right or I don't wrong know. time. <laughs> yeah. So from that, then we can start to say, well, how do we respond to this and how do we get behind this and how, aside from reputation, is it reactive or is it something that we're intentional about building in about a specific direction? Mm. Laying the framework, yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. So we need to figure out which way we're going, not just because, oh, it's Russia or it's China. It could be anybody, but who are we as people and how does that, how does, how is that represented economically? That's, that's in our control. That's in our control. Yeah, I love that. Do you think we are taking that control that we we currently have? Because if we look at the advantages that BRICS was supposed to give the country, we yeah. said, yes, it's great for cross-border, you know, relationships. It's it's great for trading and the, the economy. Do those advantages still stand to this day mm. compared to when BRICS was formed a few years ago to where we are now? Yeah, we, we are seeing that. Um, we are seeing that, and I think that's why we're still trading with the likes of China. I mean, yes, we trade with the US, but it pales in comparison to what we do with China. So we are seeing how that is moving in our economy and how that works and benefits us. So much so, again, this is a testament to how much it's working, is that we're seeing um, other countries wanting to join. My, my biggest stance is that we're able to enter a space politically and throw our weight in the direction that we choose. We just need to decide what that is. We need to be able to say, look, we're not going to be bullied. We're not going, we have an opinion and we're not just going, you know, mm. hugged in the, in the direction of whoever has the loudest voice or leverage, the highest leverage over us. Mm. So we are seeing it work. We have an alternative voice, which I think is important. Well, it's becoming one of the only clear paths to economic development for the developing world, which exactly. is, a, is a major thing. Yeah, and we do mm. punch above our weight class, which is mm. great. What will we be called? If we open up 
bricks and mortar Plus. and cement <laughs> and... Plus. Bricks. Plus. <laughs> I wonder, actually. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, maybe just Africa is fine. We can start there yeah. and then we'll expand beyond that. Thank you so much for helping us understand this a little bit more. I think from my perspective, being within the, the news kind of space, and I say that lightly, don't just go on the news. Yeah. Just remember that that is there to sell papers. It's there to clickbait. It's there to get people interested into reading the story. But the deeper story and what you take out of that requires a bit of inspection. Um, so just go out there, do your research, develop your own opinions, mm. and of course, plug into the experts like we do every single day. Natasha, thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you for having me. <laughs>